This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Protect your personal data from prying eyes with a free account from Dashlane. If you do a decent amount of driving, odds are you've seen at least a handful of electric vehicles in your area. Cars like those from Tesla are probably the most noticeable with their sleek and modern design, but there are plenty of other EVs that quietly fly under the radar, like the Chevy Bolt, Nissan Leaf, or the Toyota Prius Prime. Electric vehicles are experiencing a huge surge in popularity, with sales in 2018 up 81% from the previous year. But they still haven't put much of a dent in the total number of car sales, at least in the US. Why is that? There are a couple of reasons. Let's start by looking at US car sales as of 2018. The entire industry sold a whopping 17.2 million vehicles in the US in 2018. Of those 17 million cars, only 361,307 of them were electric. That's about 2% of total sales, and remember, that's up 81% over 2017. With all the hype electric car companies have been getting over the past few years, you'd think people would be adopting the technology at a higher rate, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Why? It mostly comes down to initial cost. The average price for a new car in 2018 was right around $35,000. That gets you a good, reliable, and fairly comfortable or speedy car. With financing options, $35,000 is still a lot of money, but a lot of average Americans are willing and able to pay it. Electric cars are at a slight disadvantage here. If you take the top 10 best-selling EVs on the market as of 2018, their average price comes out to $45,665, over $10,000 more for a comparable vehicle with greater perceived limitations. If you take the same average with the best-selling gasoline-powered cars, you come up with just $27,000, almost $10,000 below the average price for a new car. It's pretty straightforward. Most people would rather pay less money for a new car, regardless of how cool the newer technology is. But upfront cost is only one part of the problem for would-be EV owners. The other big hurdle, often overblown depending on the location, is availability of charging stations. With gasoline-powered cars, you never really have to worry about where you'll find your next gas station. Unless you're driving through the middle of nowhere, odds are you'll see a gas station within a couple miles. EV charging stations are much less abundant. There are only about 20,000 of them across the US, compared to somewhere in the ballpark of 168,000 gas stations. EV charging stations are popping up all over the place, but the concern is valid for a lot of people. If you live in rural Texas, you probably won't see a charging station within a couple hours of your home. Of course, if you live in the DFW Metroplex, you won't have any trouble charging up. The number of charging stations across the US is expected to double in the next year or so, making switching to electric vehicles much easier. Okay, say we get to the point where charging stations are nearly as prevalent as gas stations. What would it take for electric vehicles to catch up with and eventually overtake gasoline-powered car sales? First, there would need to be a larger selection of affordable EVs. As of early 2019, we're well on the way to that being a reality. After months and months of only premium trim variants of the Model 3, Tesla has finally announced the availability of their long-awaited $35,000 base model, making it perhaps the most desirable affordable electric car. This is a huge step for EVs, as Teslas have long been too expensive for average consumers, despite their enormous popularity. By bringing the price of their base model in line with the national average, we'll likely begin to see huge numbers of people making the switch to electric. But Tesla's not alone in this rapidly growing field. Honda is bringing their own offering to market later in 2019, called the Honda E. It's a small, stylish, urban EV aimed at people who don't drive long distances, but want a comfortable, efficient way to get to work and back. It will have stiff competition from the Model 3, but simply due to its novelty, it may sell better than expected. It's already gotten a lot of hype for its design and the fact that it's a cool-looking EV that's not a Tesla. Then there's the Polestar 2, the first affordable offering from Volvo's performance division. The Polestar 2 offers striking design elements and has clearly taken some notes from the Model 3's spec sheet, as the two cars are nearly identical in terms of range and performance. But the EV industry will need more than just affordable models to compete with traditional combustion engine car sales. In the United States, particularly in places like Texas, auto sales are dominated by trucks, particularly the Ford F-150 and the rest of the F-Line. In the first half of 2018, Ford alone sold over 450,000 pickups. That's almost 100,000 more sales than the entire EV industry in half the time. To really compete in the American market, electric automakers will have to square up with Ford and other pickup and SUV manufacturers. That's where Rivian comes in. Rivian has positioned themselves as the first makers of electric adventure vehicles. Whereas Tesla has stuck to making sleek and modern road cars, Rivian is gunning for the utility and off-road market. 
Their two flagship models, the R1T and R1S, pack some stunning specs. 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, 400 plus miles of range, fast charging, a towing capacity of 11,000 pounds, serious off-road and extreme weather capabilities. If Rivian can deliver on these promises, and it looks like they will be able to with a $700 million investment from Amazon, electric adventure vehicles could make a huge impact in the auto industry, and hit forward where it hurts. Tesla has also announced they'll be bringing their own pickup to market in the nearest future, which will just put more pressure on Ford and others to compete in the electric arena. Competition is good for innovation and for pricing, and if EVs can start eating up the truck, SUV, and utility vehicle market, we'll start to see a more rapid shift in the balance of power. Conventional car manufacturers will have to adapt or die, and at that point we'll see the dawn of the real age of electric vehicles. Whether that will be in 5 years or 15, it's hard to say. But the roadmap is clear. EVs will win. It's just a matter of how long it will take and which existing manufacturers will get on board. As cars become more advanced, security will become more and more critical. Even today, some electric cars are directly controllable through your smartphone. With this and every other aspect of your online activity, it's important to stay safe and have a reliable means of protecting your valuable data. There are plenty of services that help you do this, but I personally use Dashlane. Dashlane is a super secure, locally encrypted password manager for all your most important data. It's a safe place to store important documents and receipts, a VPN to keep your browsing secure from prying eyes, a dark web monitoring watchdog, and of course, a reliable password manager that makes it easy to save all of your different passwords, autofill login fields, and automatically change passwords if they're ever compromised. Go to dashlane.com slash second thought to try out these awesome features with a free trial of Dashlane Premium. And if you really want to get serious about online security, be one of the first 200 people to use the coupon code second thought to get 10% off your subscription.